cool. Let's go. Okay, hombres. Look at this one. Tiffany Red says Diddy should be held accountable for his treatment of her best friend Cassie. Okay, cool. I'm thinking though, just to play devil's advocate on this, right? If you're Diddy, and let's say he paid, let's say he paid the medium amount, right? Because I think Cassie was asking for what? 30 mil. Let's say he paid 15. He paid in a heartbeat. Let's say he paid 15. People were saying he paid more. Let's say it was 15 million. It must be a bit annoying, isn't it? That you pay 15 million to basically make the problem go away, but it doesn't go away. <laughs> That's got to hurt, isn't it? You pay 15 million to shut her up, to settle it quickly, and it just doesn't go away. It just keeps on coming. <laughs> it just keeps on coming. Everyone's like, yeah. Because that's the thing about having... That's the thing I've, I've thought about my thinking right now, right? I thought about having a sex party. When you have a sex party, the pro is that it's a sex party. Ooh, having sex. Loads of people. Ah! The cons, it's a party. So loads of people are going to come to your party. No pun intended. Loads of people are going to come. So... They're, they've all got their own accounts of what happened. So those are like unlimited amount of witnesses. So there's always somebody out there that can tell your that, that, that can tell your business. That's probably the that's probably the 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 cons against doing that sort of thing. That's why probably I guess most predators prefer just do the whole like Crystalia shit, right? Where you kind of isolate somebody, hotel room, Snapchat, abuse, you know, pillow over the face, shut up kind of thing. When you do the whole party thing, there's just too many witnesses. It's fun, of course, because there's loads of pe potential fucking people you can fuck. But on the flip side, if they want to start telling, there's a lot of people that can tell. Anyway, let's let's listen to the port courtesy of NBC News about did about um Cassie's long term friend, long time friend, saying that um Diddy should be held accountable. For Sean Diddy Combs has faced four different lawsuits in recent weeks alleging sexual assault and abuse, all of which he has denied. The first of those came from singer Cassie Ventura, known as Cassie, who accused Combs of sexual abuse and sex trafficking during the decade they were together. NBC's entertainment correspondent Chloe Malas spoke exclusively to a longtime friend of Cassie's who said she witnessed some troubling incidents. Chloe? Good evening, Ellison. Singer, songwriter, activist Tiffany Red had been working with Cassie on an album when she first met Diddy and says that she witnessed him verbally abusing her friend. Following Cassie's settlement with Diddy, Red penned an open letter in Rolling Stone about her experience. She spoke to me about the events that she says traumatized her. I don't think people understand what it's like to be traumatized by somebody famous and rich because you can't get away from them. Tiffany Red has written for the likes of Zendaya, Jason Derulo, and Jennifer Hudson. In 2015, she became friends with Cassie while writing songs for her album. At that point, Cassie and Diddy had been together for nearly eight years. In a lawsuit Cassie filed last month, she detailed the abuse she says Diddy committed, including physical assault. Red says although she did not know about the alleged physical assault while working with Cassie, she did witness... I wonder why they call her... Tiffany Red. Verbal abuse on more than one occasion, one of which took place during Cassie's 29th birthday in 2015. Red says Diddy showed up at karaoke where Cassie and a group of friends were celebrating. So he had her back into the corner and he was like cussing her out with his hand in, his fit in her face. Later that night, Red, who was staying at Cassie's home, says she awoke to screaming. Oh, he's standing in the like living room area and she's there and he was like emotional singing. There you are. And I just was like, oh, he's talking to me. And I remember, like, I don't know if you know his, his what his voice sounds like, but, like, I felt like I was in the presence of his monster inside. All right, girl, let's relax. But um, isn't that always an awkward position to be in? I've never been in those kind of positions before. I don't, I don't think I have, where, like, your friend is arguing with their partner in your presence. I've never really had that when they're having like, if anything, some of my friends, if they've had any couples beefs, they usually do the whole like, they, they kind of, you know, silently fucking shut up. You can't, I, I didn't mean it though. Oh, you fucking shut up. You can't, where's my fucking boot? But babe, I want to come to see my friends. Are you fucking, you know, do that whole shit. You don't really hear them getting full blown arguments. It must be really awkward when you're the friend. <clears throat> Especially if you're staying over. What the fuck do you do? And I remember like looking in his eyes and I said to him, what did y'all do? Because I could see that she was, like, really sedated. That was the first time I'd ever seen her, like, high before. And then he says, tell your girl she wants some birthday And we were like, well, I mean, he's saying this to me. And I'm like, 
well, she doesn't have to have sex with you if she doesn't want to. He was upset, like, you know, I guess sh that she didn't want to do with him whatever she, whatever he wanted, I don't know. I, I don't feel like I could advocate for myself in that moment. Like, I realized, like... Um... Is she getting permission from Cassie to talk about this? I hope Cassie said yes, because this is kind of weird. No? Why is the friend coming out talking about this shit? Did Cassie give her permission to share these details? Or is she just looking for a little bit of clout to share them by herself? It's like, this is kind of odd, man. Like, why are you sh letting her? Oh, this guy is dangerous. Red says it was only a few months ago that Cassie told her what was really going on that ah, night okay. in 2015. Fair enough, fair that enough. it all stemmed from the music executive wanting her to take part in what he called a freak off against her will. What did Cassie <laughs> tell you about these freak offs? You know, that he would hire these like sex workers and like they would have, you know, sex with her or whatever and he would watch and tell them what to do. In her lawsuit, Cassie alleges she was forced to participate in freak-offs throughout her relationship with Diddy. Red learning recently one horrific detail from Cassie. She told me the only time he was willing to do anything or work on her music, go through any <laughs> um, plans, any of that, was when she had a freak-off. So all of our music, all my work, to wow. find out that like, I spent all these years writing these songs for him to, to rape my friend to, yeah, and she was getting gangbanged and shit. You know what's funny about these freak offs? I've been in some very dicey situations, right? <laughs> I've seen some dicey things. And I swear in my life, I've never been in any kind of space where that shit can happen and the people look like Diddy and Cassie. They don't look like them, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Usually people who are into that sort of shit don't really look like that. <laughs> that's, the <laughs> that's the wild thing, I swear on my life. People that usually are into that sort of shit do not look like your first choice. Let's just say that. <laughs> but once you've got a couple of oi oi's in you and some hello hellos, maybe it gets a bit fun. <laughs> like, it's just disgusting. Ooh. In the lawsuit, Cassie detailed the physical abuse she says Diddy committed, including an instance where she was put in a hotel room for days to heal. Red says Cassie recently told her about Diddy giving her a black eye before the premiere of her 2016 film, The Perfect Match. I remember one time her telling me that, I think it might have been The Perfect Match, that, that movie that she was in, and she told me that she had a black eye under her makeup. Do you believe Diddy is a dangerous person? Yes. You know what I think is more dangerous about people like Diddy? And I think I, I noticed that when the whole Harvey Weinstein thing happened. The Diddy situation is uniquely evil because, as she said, all Diddy's music, all of Cassie's music, sorry, success, was linked to her. It was, sorry, all of the, Cassie's success was linked to the times that her and Diddy were good, which means that they were doing loads of freak-offs and he, he was she was basically letting him do whatever to her, right? So that's proof that although Diddy's a fucking monster... In a weird, subverted, sadistic, and disgusting and evil way, he's also a man of his word. That's the really scary part. Similar to Harvey Weinstein. Why did Harvey Weinstein get away from it for so long? Yes, he's powerful, he's big, whatever. But the main reason why he got away with it, people have alleged, is that he actually followed through. He was a man of his word. If he said, come up to my room and suck on, suck on my fucking little willy, you go to suck his little willy, and guess what? Suddenly you're in fucking Ocean's Eleven. It was like that. He didn't fuck around. You know, if he promised you something, if he, he promised to get you in a room, if he promised to get you a role, he would do it. So even though they're being abusive, even though they're fucking awful, even though they're fucking monsters, there are some people out there, as, you know, Fashion Roadman's pointed out, a few other of you have pointed out anything, who are so desperate for clout, they're willing to turn a blind eye to the evilness and the disgusting nature of that sort of shit. They're willing to turn a blind eye to it just so they can get closer to their dreams, just so they can achieve their fucking dreams. And it's kind of perverse because you think about those speeches when actors would get Oscars and shit and they'd be thanking their team and their agents and their managers and the first person that gave them acting lessons and the person that told them they couldn't make it. And inevitably, it always come around to Harvey Weinstein. So I'm sure some of the victims are like, you know what? 
getting on that stage, receiving that gold trophy is worth it. If I have to suck this disgusting, fat, obese man's fucking dick just to get a role, and then after that, I don't have to talk to him again, it's worth it. But of course, it's not, because what ends up happening is that you end up going. So it's like when you get the role and you leave his grip of control, somebody else takes his position. So the brave thing to do is to maybe put your career to one side, actually speak out on those things and help other people coming up to avoid the situation that you got in. But of course, you live in individualistic society. It's Hollywood. It's dog eat dog. It is what it is. That's the really scary and sad thing about it. Both Diddy and Harvey Weinstein were clearly like they weren't fucking slouches. You know what I mean? They were high level performers. They put out great movies. In Diddy's case, they put out amazing albums, create amazing experiences, put on great shows, music videos. But behind that was all that dark, evil shit. That's why people turn a blind eye. Because of the dark, because of the fun times, right? Because of when it's fucking, you know, disco balls and confetti and shit. But behind the scenes, look what's going on. Crazy. I did. Why? I mean, look at his rap sheet. An attorney for Cassie declined to comment. Diddy's attorney did not respond. In 2015, Diddy was arrested on three counts of assault with a deadly weapon and other charges for allegedly beating up his son's football coach. Prosecutors declined to file felony charges related to that arrest. 24 hours after Cassie filed her lawsuit, she and Diddy announced that they had reached an undisclosed settlement. Combs released a statement saying, we have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. His lawyer adding that the settlement was, quote, in no way an admission of wrongdoing. I mean, I just feel like it's PR. <laughs> he settled because he doesn't want to go to court. Diddy's music career spans three decades, including three Grammy Awards and the creation of Bad Boy Records. By the way, we're done. Representing we're done. We're done. Mary we're done. We're done. Now, I just hope at the end of this, lessons are learned in that I just wish for 2024, because I, I, you know, I, I did that obviously that whatever podcast little watch along thing we saw, you know, that guy Satan and the Sinner brag those girls. Maybe 2024, can we see all those like red pill? manosphere guys just turn and be like you know start preaching the gospel of like how to be a quote-unquote player without treating girls like shit is that possible can that guy exist i'm sure they do the guy that's out here in the streets laying fucking pipe having a good time partying smashing everything that fucking moves but he doesn't treat them like shit he's not a rapist he's not an abuser i'm sure they exist so why can't those guys preach that message? Hey, if you see a girl that you like, talk talk to her nice. Try and get on a good side. She doesn't want she doesn't want to if she doesn't want to do anything with you, cool, whatever. That's a new friend. It's actually kind of cool to go to a club and have like all these girls around you that are all your friends because other girls might see that and be like, oh my god, cool. He's a cool guy. Why don't they preach that gospel? Where's that fucking message? Where's that message of how to be like the cool, suave guy on the fucking in the club or in front of a table? Like always good company, always a pleasure to hang out with. The kind of guy that's like, he's not, he's not like, where's my hug at? He's all like, hey, where's the fun? Where's your friends? Let's have, let's join your group with my group. Let's go over there. Let's, where's that guy? I'm sure they exist. I'm sure there's, those guys do fucking exist. Let's promote that now. Let's do the opposite of the fucking Diddy shit. Of the exploitation and the fucking, you know, abuse and the harassment. Because that is also necessary. We need to all fucking work together. Harmony, men and women together. Everything else in between. We have to all work together. It's not us v them. You feel me? But obviously if you're a piece of shit, you need to get called out. Cool. But let's lessons be learned. None of this fucking, oh, let me get on a panel and start fucking scolding girls because I don't know. It's just come on, man. Come on, man. Where the smooth niggas at, man? Where the smooth niggas at, man? I want the niggas, man. Where are they? What about the man? <laughs> Where are the man? <laughs> Where are they? Oh. No, but for real though, I wonder why that isn't a thing. Why isn't that a thing? Like how to be cool. How to be suave. Like that whole Rico Suave fucking, you know, caricature and shit. Where is that gone? The R&B guy like licking his lips. Where's the fuck's that gone? The smooth guy. You know? Where, where, where is that person gone? Why all these rid pet, why all these Manosphere guy dorks? Why are they all dorks that shout out OnlyFans girls? 
Like, oh, like where, 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 where's the smooth guys? Where are they? Where, where are the fellas? Fellas. <laughs> where are the fellas? <laughs> the ladies need you, but I need you too. <laughs> Ooh, ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where are the fucking fellas, man? Bang your doors, man. Slap your dicks on the fucking table, fellas. Let's go. Anyway, cool. Let's move on. Uh ah, oh, good point, Z. Thank you, Snake Hips. Appreciate you, brother. <laughs> Game bread footballer Chin should do these parties Should go to these parties And do a vlog Yo Chin would clear the room Chin would clear the room If Chin went to go vlog With his little fucking With his little SLR That he puts on his fucking With his SLR That he puts on his backpack He would fucking clear the room With his little <laughs> He would fucking clear the room all the girls will be like scratching their head and walking away. Like, what the fuck? Who the fuck is, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and Z was right. I saw Z earlier said, um, those guys don't live on the internet. I think you're right, basically. Those type of guys don't really, you know, they're too busy actually getting it in, for real, you know? They're not going to be out here fucking selling courses like join my mastermind, my fucking, you know, what you call it, pavement only discord, my my telegram group. Like, fuck off, you knob. What are you guys saying here? What are you guys saying? What are you guys saying? What are you guys saying here? Um, uh, didn't you hear, bro? Myron has saved thousands of dudes from suicide. I'm convinced. I'm, I'm almost convinced. I'm almost convinced. I'm almost convinced, NJ Ranger and, and you else, and everyone else out here, I'm almost convinced that's like a running meme now. That's become like a little meme in, in, in itself. Hey, man, I'm a big fan of the show. I'm just want to let you know that, you know, I was about to end it, and then I listened to fucking episode number 179. <laughs> and I'm still here. I swear, I'm convinced that's like a running troll that people don't realize. I'm sure that's a troll. I'm sure of it, man. Yeah, you know, I just, you know, I caught the fucking Agostino Zinger Show episode number 777. And I just, I couldn't, under, you know, I was just captivated by what you were saying about Air Force Ones. <laughs> and I didn't walk out the window. It's like, fuck off. Do yourself a favor. Come on, man. <laughs> what well, a fashion row, man. Literally all women want to have sex more and will love you more if you don't bring it up and you're not super thirsty. At least that's it. Fuck exactly. And it works for everything. Not just for fucking having sex. Everything. You want to make a friend? Guess what? Don't just keep saying, are you my friend? Are you my friend? I want to be a friend. You'll be my friend. We'll be my friend. People are going to run away. If you want a job, can I get a job? Can I get a job? Can I get a job? No. Acting cool, acting chill, acting measured, acting relaxed, acting like you're a good time. And guess what? Most of the time, people will respond well. Whether whether you're in line at fucking pret a manger whether you're fucking on the fucking train waiting for a seat, if you're a good vibe and you admit that, trust me, trust me, people will reciprocate. And what do, what do I know? I'm in my fucking mum's basement, man. What do I know, man? Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Podcastable, your gun. I nearly was at my rope's end and caught a live once. And I'm still here because of you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It was that one podcast, it was that one stream that started on time <laughs> that told me, you know what? <laughs> Life is worth living. If this guy can hang around and stream, uh, if this guy's fiber optic is still running, <laughs> I should give life another go. <laughs> Big up podcastables. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you.